Liberty Flight sponsors 10-Year Tip with Gary Dibley. Well, good evening. It is a Monday night. It is 9 o'clock and it is time to tin your tip with myself, Gary Dibley, and the ever-capable mod master that is Mark. Um, I've been sort of out in the sticks today and out in the woods and totally without connection anywhere, but I'm sort of picking up that, that obviously a few things have, have uh, sort of been afoot. Um, I'm not fully up to, uh, up to speed with what they are, but I can sort of gauge by the reaction. It's not that great. Um, I'm not going to go into that at all other than other than saying um and i believe that that mr dorm has already put this in chat now is is the time that the action is needed um and and people do need to sort of uh stand up and talk and be heard and all of that sort of stuff um no doubt there will be uh, a lot more on that later in the week um we're here to talk about modding on a lighter note um obviously just like i say the raffle ticket uh, sales for the children need thing um has now closed um We'll be doing the live draw in this slot um, next week where I'll be picking out the, the winners. Um, I think it's, it's somewhere in the region of about 4,800 odd-ish quid, less the gift aid. So uh, with the gift aid, pretty much near six grand, which is absolutely fantastic. And thank you very, very much for everybody who has uh, sort of taken part um, in, in this so far, making it possible. Let's crack on with tonight. And, and tonight I'm, I'm picking up the, uh, the DNA 20 once again um haven't sort of uh, played since the last one and and uh, and the screen failed uh, mark's going to be taking a look at um at that little modding board i looked at a couple of weeks ago um and in between you'll have some waffle from from this muppet um let's crack on with the first video if you can find it i'll be back in two hi uh, i've been told this week because Gary raised so much money for children in need, I'm going to have to do this show completely naked. So, not want to disappoint, uh, I'll do just that. So, if you've got a nervous disposition, you might want to look away now. Let's look, completely naked. So, anyway, what I'm going to be working with this week is one of these step down boards Gary kind of gave me when I saw and I'm gonna try putting it into a small tin with 280 and 650 batteries uh, this board is tiny uh, to give you a rough idea of just how small there's a 510 connector uh, I'm gonna work with something incredibly small and this is the potentiometer, which is going to be a nightmare to work with. So I'm going, what I'm going to try and do is take this off and see if I can find a replacement that I can put on, which will be a bigger size. But I'm not 100% confident I'm going to manage this. We shall see. My first job is going to be to get this thing off so I can see what size the potentiometer actually is so I know what to replace it with. Just a surface mount. So there you can see the board. I've got three solder points to work with, and hopefully, I'll be able to solder something like this onto those points. But first, I need to grab me multimeter. Now, because I don't have a clue exactly what the uh, value of this is. I've set it to the maximum possible as a starting point and the two points I want are the ones on the same side. So hopefully I 
that's reading point two. I've got a horrible feeling this is a 200 kilo ohm potentiometer. And indeed it is. Reading there 199. I don't have anything anywhere near that size, I'm afraid. But what I'm going to try and do is just add this 10k potentiometer in for now and see what happens. It should give some interesting results. Let's see. So, first job, try and solder these wires on. Uh, I've got two on one side, which will be my two black ones, which is the two on this side. And a single red one will go to the single point. I think I'll start with that one. here is already pre-tinned so hopefully this shouldn't be too difficult. three terrible connections. Next I need to connect up a power supply so I can find out what's going on and uh, meet that to the output. So this side's the input. This side's one negative. So to this side. And the other side we need a meter or something. Okay, so we're back in the room once again. And um, <clears throat> I think it's been a long time coming. Um, but I have here a few pieces. Now, I didn't make these. These were made um, very kindly by a gentleman on UK Vapors called SJ Pearson, who has been doing uh, some amazing stuff with a box of this nature. Now, I have been speaking to him. Um, he's now a mod maker and is, is going to be selling a few mods on, on UK Vapors. And I managed to uh, chat to him and say, can I grab one? Um, so this is effectively a, uh, a project box in very raw form. Um, this is sort of thing that I was I was hoping to to get round to uh, sort of making at some stage on on the uh, you know on the, the Dremel and all that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. But when I can get it ready made, that saves a whole lot of pain. Now, effectively, what I've got there is um, an oak uh, center and two walnut 
um, veneers uh, to go on the side, which will make my my base and my my lid section, um, which will make a nice little sandwich mod. Um, and that is going to be really a nice size in the hand. Um, what am I going to do with it? Um, I don't know. Now, this is the outset. Don't expect to see anything amazing today. Um, I'm just literally uh, going to talk you through how I look at potentially planning out a mod. Um, what am I going to be using? Um, I'm going to bring this in and hopefully we're going to be uh, looking at getting one of these bad boys, the DNA20, um, inside that mod. Now, as you will probably yeah, I can I can tell you, I can almost hear the sharp intakes of breath and all that as I say that because if you watch for a long time you'll probably recognise this thing um, and this was my first go at uh, if you like converting this wooden box mod over to the DNA um, where we made a uh, an inlay over one side and uh, and we had our buttons popping through and all this any other now it is still in that state and if you recall the reason it is in that state is because the uh, the screen failed on me now it does still work it still works as it is but obviously no display which is no good really for me at all now I'm hoping that the, uh, the new DNA board is going to be a bit kinder to me now just to show you a bit of a size comparison there's not that much in it um, Width-wise, it is pretty much going to be bang on, but the dimensions are a lot smaller in terms of height and width. Not a lot, but enough to make that a lot more pocketable, a lot more comfortable. Um, what am I going to do? I don't know. Um, now, this, this box is, I say, very, very, very compact. Um, and what I'm looking at potentially doing, um, this is made predominantly for a 14500. Now, as you can see with a 14500, there is hardly any room in there whatsoever to um, to mess with. So I'm sort of thinking, and this isn't probably going to be the spring I'm using, but with a hot spring down in there and a contact on the top, that battery is going to sit something like that. Um, I'll probably get a bit more of a uh, of a compacty spring because that's going to be tight as buggery. But um, yeah. am I going to be putting USB charging in it? I doubt it. That is going to be very, very, very tight. I've got to get a switch in there. I've got to get the ATI down in. I've got to get a switch and I've got to get the, the DNA board. Very, very, very tight. Um, I may well look at doing something else with this. I'm not sure. Uh, we'll see how we have a sort of a sample test fit out and how that goes today. Um, and if that works well, well, we'll start trying to uh, to piece it together. He says, but like I say, I really, really, really don't know. I'm I'm looking at it. It's the first time I'm looking at it, um, and hopefully we can sort of share the progress. Um, but you can sort of see where we're going with it. Um, our floaty mod. Let me pop back in two and uh, and we'll start making some some measures and all that sort of stuff um, sort of see how we plan a mod like this out hopefully uh, yeah interesting he says interesting probably not a good day to start because everything I've touched today has gone to uh, to pot um, I've never had so many problems in the workshop as I've had today um, so let's talk through, do a plan, see how we go, and uh, and we'll take it from there. Back to me. I'll be back in two. So why can't I say something to change this situation? Great words of wisdom springing to my mind. What have I done to deserve this aggravation? No, I never. 
never said I'm perfect If I did it was a lie Meet me halfway Do I have to get a stick So you can beat me once again Meet me halfway Cause you're not fair Cause I've tried so hard to get to know you But you're not giving anything away I've tried every trick in the book To try to break you down But I stand defeated I hold my hands up now You beat me hands down So why do you use me to vent all your frustrations? Yeah, why does everything that I say have to be a lie? And why are you so deeply into confrontations? Cause I'm not going nowhere And you'll miss me when I die Meet me halfway Do I have to get a stick So you can beat me once again Meet me halfway Cause you're not fair Cause I'm to get to know you but you're not giving anything away I've tried every trick in the book to try to break you down but I stand defeated I hold my hands up now you beat me hands down If I gave myself to you completely Would it help me? If I never gave my point of view Would it help me? Yeah, I'm short-tempered Sponsors 10 Year Tip with Gary Dibley.
Weber and I Weber Election. Best in Yorkshire for your basic needs. That's iweber.co.uk and iweber-elixir.co.uk. Why Weber and I Weber-elixir.co.uk approach sponsors of webertrails.tv. Sponsors 10 Year Tip with Gary Dibley. And there we go. And uh, in the nick of time, just about remembered to uh, to turn the headphones off again. Um, nearly come back with the echo of death. Um, yes, obviously, you've seen the prizes now. I think that's the first update the, or the final list as it, as it is. Um, looking good. Next week, um, they'll start going out. Hopefully, Tuesday, Wednesday, people should have prizes. Um, so thank you very much again for taking part. Um, let's see if it isn't banned by then. Um, I don't know whether they'll ban the raffle. Um, yeah, I'm gradually catching up while while putting this out. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to go where I was last time just yet. Um, I think the message is, is quite clear and, and, and one that will be echoed. Um, now is the time. Um, if, if you haven't already and if you've done it do it again um, to start kicking butt basically um, let's crack on with our next little video and uh, I'll pop back very shortly after this yeah. meter of some description Resolded the wire so at the input we've got a positive and a negative. The output has a positive and negative to a display, and the other three connections are for this potentiometer, which is completely the wrong size. So let's see what happens. Well, now I've got one more job to do before I start. I need to get rid of these lugs so I can get the batteries out quickly if I have to. off. Right. So first battery in. Second battery in and nothing. Yeah. 
according to the meter I'm getting 1.16 volts out. Turn all the way to this side. 0.8 volts out. One point six five, right. So my initial idea is not going to work. I need a much bigger potentiometer here. So I'm going to go away and see where I can find, and I'll pop back when I sort out. So I've had a good look around, and I definitely haven't got anything that would be suitable to replace this thing. So I'll have to order something in. But in the meantime, I'm going to carry on because. That bit of testing has told me three very important things. Firstly, I can replace the potentiometer on the board with something else, as I've proven. Uh, I, uh, I now know the size of the potentiometer, which is a 200k potentiometer, so I know, I know um, what I need to get. And because of the way it reacted with this one, I also know that the way it's wired up, the value of the potentiometer is very important. So I must get one the correct size for this to work properly. Now, one or two of you might be wondering why the display didn't light up at all, as if it was failing. And that's because this type of display will only work when the output is at least, at least 3, 3.3 volts before it will light up. So obviously nothing happens when it was only putting out less than 2 volts at the maximum. But I'll not be able to finish this off this week, but I'm going to carry on working on it anyway. So what I'm going to put it in is a simple tin. This particular one's a very small tin Gary gave me. So what I'm planning is twin 18650 there. If I do it right, there's enough room to fit the board in there, a display alongside, which will just fit in, and once I've done some adjustments, there'll be enough room for a switch at the top and an atomizer connector. Now, the first adjustment I need to make is to the case. What I'm going to try and do is cut off this corner so it fits in better. So. Before I start, I need to swap this blade over as the side that was out was very definitely blunt, and a blunt blade is incredibly dangerous. So, I'll try and cut the, the whole corner off this just to give myself a bit more room to work with here. So I've been taking a, a closer look at this box um, and how it's pretty much sort of uh, designed and he, he's done a very, very, very good job, um, SJ Pearson, of, of sort of getting this um, to where it is. I mean, I know it looks like a, a simple cut out in wood, but some of the, the design features that I've noticed are quite clever, as in the atomizer is pretty much to the depth it would need to be to support that correctly within that chunk of wood. Um, I'm probably going to have to knock a little bit off the ring there um, because I want this sitting back up inside the wood um, and I want to recess it because predominantly I would use this for a uh, for an atty that doesn't need a breathe hole, something like the K fun or something like that, um, whereas the breathe hole's on the side. Now, the way that he sort of uh, designed these boards to be used um, was essentially with, with the VAMO. Um, and with the VAMO, um, you can sort of see, you slot the VAMO in sideways and, uh, and you could quite happily have your display pop through, a couple of buttons there and, and your fire button. Um, and 
realistically this was going to be a if you like a sealed model um, with one of the little USB charging boards you could slot that down there in the bottom and still get a battery in and all of your gubbins is sort of there and it can't get it to stand up straight um, sort of like that so sandwich up your board so you had your USB charging out the bottom um, your Vamo board down in the side with your buttons and that poking through um, and that would be a nice little compact unit um, that you can charge via the USB etc etc looking at the way with the DNA um, now I know he he designed these for the Vamo so we're, we're trying to get the bloody DNA to fit in um, and looking at it it's, it's not going to be as nice as I thought it was going to be to start with um, if I stick a battery in just so we can sort of uh, yeah, semi get that in to give us an idea of sort of sizing so 18,490, 18,500 um, AW in there. Now, realistically, a little board, and I absolutely um, crap myself when I start to handle these. Um, I have a bad history with them, and so do a few people. But realistically, my POS or, or my ATI, as I say, could sit dead central there, providing I trim this down enough that it's just going to sit inside that wood. They'll give me enough to bring a pos out and a neg out down to the board of the DNA quite happily. The switch that I would like to incorporate in this is, um, and I've got an old one, I need to get some more, one of these gold plated um, SD switches. Uh, silver bullet, not SD, God, deeply. Told you it was a bad day. So I, I want to sit that, um, and I probably want to sit that relatively high up there now you can sort of see the depth on that switch may not allow me to use it i may have to find something with with a much less of a footprint but realistically i would love to try and incorporate that now to incorporate that i've got to take a little nogging out of this corner here um, so that, that switch would sit sort of up in the top there the problem I've got then is the, the way that the DNA works obviously you want to be able to see the screen and you want to you want to be able to um, to change the voltage up and down on the buttons so the way that the the DNA board works or the DNA 20 just bear me one second is obviously in its native format you've got the fire switch down here and you've got two buttons there now I want to be using external sources for for the fire for this that the other so this button is gonna essentially be this gold plated one and then I need to find some space to put an up and a down button. The way that I would probably work this is to wrap this display around the back and sort of attach it to the back of the board like so. So the DNA board could actually sit down inside the mod that way. I can't be so bloody careful with this thing. These screens hate me. So that would sort of sit down there like that. Now it would probably sit a little bit lower, probably somewhere down there, because my switch would be coming through. They shouldn't be this fiddly. I'm sorry Brandon, but they shouldn't be this fiddly. So my screen would probably sit somewhere centrally. I'm going to just leave it on its side like that. Just pretend the screen's pointing out that way. So the switch would be up here, a connection would be embedded in there, which means I would have to get. I've, I've really gone way off shot there, haven't I? So, which would mean I'd have to get a, uh, the little plus and a minus button down on this side somewhere. Now, if I'm going to be using some of the little external switches, they're probably going to be the um, the silver one, so I may change that out for a silver switch and probably a silver connector. It match it all up. So, looking at it in theory. It looks sort of doable, providing, and this is the, the big proviso, that, let's take that off there carefully, providing that, that I can I can get enough of a cat off this switch. Now, I'm not too fussed if I have to use a much smaller switch. Um, that isn't going to be an issue at all. You could almost use one of the little, um, tiny little, really, really tiny, almost a switch Sort of, of that size behind it if you wanted to but I, I want a chunky funky monkey 
could even take the corner off and take it down at an angle this way which would sort of give me a little bit more but then it would be quite tight to get my Atti connection because I'd have to go over a bit so if I could get it in flat hide my Atti in the middle there etc that would be better for me like I say at this stage I'm, I'm looking at this box and looking at how I think it can be laid out and how I think it, it can work and for me at this moment in time it looks possible to get that somewhere in the middle have my switch at the top and then a couple of buttons low down on here for the, for adjusting sort of up and down on, on the wattage that's looking looking that way now the more that this little screen flaps around the more I panic so what I'm going to do before I do anything is I am going to uh, put some power through this board uh, just to test that it does actually function, that it does actually work. Um, there's nothing worse than, than doing what we did with this box is getting everything cut out, everything in and, and then it fails. At least if I know it's working now I know it's me that screwed it rather than anything else. So it's looking like a possibility. Then This is probably going to have to go over a few weeks purely because I'm going to have to get this section set in um, once I've got all my holes cut out and all that sort of stuff I want to do some some sort of a little bit of sanding and shaping on on the board on on the board and then obviously I've got to try and make this section so it's uh, removable to change a battery I don't think I'm gonna have enough space in this box to, to, to get a USB um, charging circuit in yet yet he says um, this may fall f flat on his face I don't know it probably will know me um, and knowing the luck I've had today let me pop away in two I'm going to sort of sort out a power pack and let's see if we can get some life into uh, into our new DNA20 board pop back in two And there we go, we're back in the room. Um, so yes, starting work on, on the DNA. Um, it's it's going to take a, a little time. Um, this one's going to be a keeper for me, so I want to make sure I get it right. Um, I know there's been a couple of suggestions, could use the old board, but that is spot welded in the mod. Um, and uh, and the I don't really want to take any more wood off there. Um, I don't want to affect the stability of it. it it's oak. Um, I'm worried anyway about snapping it when, when I go. Um, I'm going to move on rapidly because uh, with the bits I've got coming up I know I'm going to run a little bit close to the wind. Um, if you can, if you are in and you're watching this live and you're in the chat, um, please stick around after this show. Um, uh, Dave Dorn wants to have a brief, uh, or no, I don't know, it'll be brief, but a chat with uh, with all guys just to, to give us a bit of an update on on today's events. Like I say, I've missed them totally. I've been in in no man's land today. Um, let me crack on with the air brakes. We'll pop back in two. Liberty Flight sponsors 10-Year Tip with Gary Dibley. Sponsors 10 Year Tip with Gary Dibley. And there we go, we're back in the room once again. So, yes, as I said just before the break, uh, Mr. Dorm will be uh, taking. Um, 
taking the air after after this show. Uh, stay tuned, stay in chat. Um, it'll be coming up very, very, very shortly. Um, and I uh, hope, I hope, um, you know, probably a good job I, I, I haven't read today because I think the last time I, I, I came on with, with um, I, I'm calling it the, the PO moment. Um, and, uh, and I don't really want to have one of those at this moment in time. Um, or next week for the raffle. So I'm trying to put my fingers in my ears. Um, no, the Hulk needs to needs to stay away. Um, let me uh, get into our next little set. I'll be back in two. Oh. I don't want to pop this in. That will now sit flush up against the back and the side at the same time, so it's taking up the minimum room in the case. The other thing I need to check is when I've got a pair of batteries in here that the height is still low enough so that it'll fit in. So if I just pop these parts in here for now normally I'd check all this when it was before I started, but I forgot. But I can see that's all fitting in there. There's nothing in, really in the slightest. So we're all good. You really shouldn't do this with a live circuit. Because you're risking something shorting out on the case with all these electronics. decide to wire this up. I'm going to be leaving the potentiometer control on the inside of the case. I'm not going to have it sticking through to the outside. That's because the display is going to be in here so the only way you're going to be able to adjust it is with the lid off anyway. So it's not really worth going to all the trouble of trying to get a control on the outside when you've got to look inside to adjust it anyway. So I'm going to go for the easy option. And I've decided that the battery holder is going to sit up against this back corner. So I'm going to have all my electronics down here. So this space is what's going to be available for switches and atomizer connector. So I want the atomizer connector on the top, obviously, and this side of the top. So I'll just grab some masking tape. And this is just to make my life easier when I'm drilling. And what I need to measure out is to make sure that I drill the hole far enough from the base so there's not a problem later on. And as your atomizer connector is around about 9mm, it means I've got to leave a minimum of 5mm five, five from the top for the hole. Uh, get that out of the way. So anywhere along that line should be fine for where I want it. I think about there will do me. So that's where I'm going to try drilling the hole. I'm just doing this all by eye as usual. So pilot drill in place. Make sure the drill is going in the right direction. And my drill's wandering. Simple pilot hole drilled. And as always, I've got my step drill bit 
with a mark out at 11 30 seconds which I know is just what a perfect size for an atomizer connector Simple as that. I've now got a hole drilled out. You can see I've got about a mil gap between the hole and the base, which means that I've got some air. Uh, it won't take a lot of glue underneath it to hold the atomizer connector in place. I need to clean off the inside so I don't cut myself. So I'll pop back when I've done that. Now then, I completely forgotten to mark out a position for the switch. So what I've done is I've popped the lid back on so I can mark a line where the top of the lid's going to be. So I know what sort of area I've got to work with under here. And that switch is obviously going to be too big. As well that one. So I think from what I've got lying around it's gonna to have to be one of these simple little push switches. Which is gonna be just big enough to fit in there. So. Okay, so we are back. Um Essentially what I've done is, is just rigged up a little uh, 18650 holder um, to put some power through this board just to see how we go and I've got my uh, my grips uh, sort of all my little vice thing so I can hold this DNA board as tight as buggery while I work on it. Um, let me just come down whenever so slightly until about there should do. So. It should do it. I've got to get my battery um, connected on here. Pos and minus. Now these are the tiniest little burrs in the world to work on and I still haven't replaced my tip so I've got to be so bloody careful when I'm doing this. I'm just going to tip my tip, try and drop a bit. Like I say it's not going to, it's going to be a pain in the bum. More than a pain in the bum than I thought it would be on that. And try and get one on the pause. There. And then I'm just going to try and tack on a pause and a neg on, onto this board. I'm very careful with this ribbon wire here. There's a neg on, and the pos I'll just take out the side for the moment. There. So hopefully, we've got a display up as well. So I'm not sure which way this, which way that is round. But let me just drop a battery and then see if it comes to life. <sighs> we like that. Okay. Let me just try and spin it around a little bit so you can see what we got. So, my board is live. It's alive. Um, so, I've got my battery display on there, I've got my wattage on there, and in true form, I should be able to doop, 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 just notch those up and down, he says. With these buttons here. Da, 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 down the wattage. And bang up again. I don't know what that is. Why have we got 
Oh yeah, 7.6. It starts at 7 watts and goes up to silly watts. Or Mr. Dorm Watts as I call them. I mean 7 is probably you know where I'd start if you know what I mean. But what's the top end? Should know by now, shouldn't I? I think it's about 15 watts. No, I lied. Is that 18 watts? I should know this. Oh Christ. Okay, 20 watts. That would blow my tits off, to be honest with you. Um, yes, and obviously it doesn't cycle around. You've got to go back all the way back down. Um, everybody knows this is a cracking board. It is an absolute stonking board. Um, now the one I've got in in the other in the other box works, and it, it does work. Um, works very 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 well. But I just don't have the display. Um, now chances are there's something I did with that. Chances are you know. It, these connections don't like being buggered around with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a, a leaf out of um, Mark's book and I'm just going to uh, put an extra coat of epoxy just under the back end of this ribbon um, and get that held down and, and epoxied down there. Um, I might actually do that any second now. I'm just going to uh, take the battery out and let me just relieve these wires from the board. Like I say they're they're tiny, tiny, tiny little boards to work with. Very, very, very small. And um, I'm aiming, he says. I'm aiming uh, to get this done. Um, I'm aiming to get it done within the next few weeks. But I really just I, d I don't know. Um, with a, I don't know, I, you know, you, you look at one of those things and you think, is this beyond my capability? Uh, all of this fine stuff. And, and I've done it before, but this is going to be probably in the, the, the tightest space that I work within. Um, I'm historically crap with wood. And, um, I don't know. It'd be an interesting journey anyway. I'm just mixing this two part. Now, normally I don't use this stuff. Um, Mark's your man for this stuff. But this is the uh, Pound Shop Epoxy. And that, while I'm doing that, I'll, I can answer a question that was actually asked in, uh, I see it in one of the forums. And it was actually specifically directed to, to Tin Your Tip and, and the way that we work. And, and sort of the question was, what do you guys... Why, why do you guys use the, the different epoxies and all that sort of stuff and, and why just not hot glue? Hot glue has its places when it's you know, holding in battery holders and all that sort of stuff. When you want an absolute rock solid fix, um, I prefer to use the epoxy and I think so does Mark. Now we have our own uh, sort of ways that we use the epoxy. Um, Mark favours this stuff, I absolutely hate it, but all I'm going to do, and I'll see if I can come down on it, it it's going to be tight, there, all I'm going to do is, you see where that little, where the board could possibly lift off the track there, I'm just going to be dropping a tiny bit of the epoxy down on that ribbon cable, down inside there, I'm just letting it drop down in. After I've tested this and I know, you know, I've tested it, I know it works. So I'm just dropping that down in and then just going to sandwich that up and hold that there. So that sets off. Probably leave it dangling like that. Just over something. I'll just put my hand in the bloody epoxy. So basically, that's all gone really funny colours. I'm just going to leave that dangling over there with that epoxy seeping out. And that should hopefully give me a, a nicer 
a nicer connection. Let's just prop it under there a bit, and I might have put a. And then what I'll do is I'll test this again afterwards. I'm also just going to put a little, a little tiny bit on the top just before it sets. This stuff is really going off quickly. <laughs> just a tiny bit on the top. What I'm going to do is just. Pop that down with my finger, as Mark did, because we've both been bitten by these boards. I just pop that down, and I'm just going to hold that in place until that sets off. Now that hopefully should stop my, or give me a bit more rigidity, stop that flapping around, stop the possibility of it snapping and, and being pulled off. Um, with that said, I'm going to hold this in place until it dries. Um, hopefully, in the next few weeks, I'm going to start messing around with the uh, with the box, uh, with the switches, with this that, and the other. Um, I'm not sure whether it'll be next week because I need to have a look at it. I've got all the parts. They've got to come in, and then I need to see where we go with them. But most definitely, uh, within or before Christmas, hopefully, I should have that thing uh, fired up and, and working. Back to me in the studio. Pop back into and there we go we're back in the room once again um i was just looking at chat and somebody said and, and straight after that um he went to a and e with everything glued to himself um reminds me of a a <laughs> my mate's dad um true story um he was into making model air, air you know airplane kits and all that sort of stuff um he ran out of the the proper airfix glue um so decided one afternoon to sit after sunday dinner with an airfix plane on his lap um and he was making it with super glue um, he dozed off, uh, it was obviously a good dinner um, he woke up only to find that the super glue had leaked um, through the box um, sticking the, the, the plane to the box um, seeped through the box and stuck the, uh, the box to his trousers which in turn seeped through his trousers and, and stuck his trousers to his pants um, which in turn stuck his mail bits um, and everything together in one solid unit um, he had to go to A&E <laughs> It's a true story. He had to go in A and E to 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 get it removed. Um, and the first thing the the, the doctor said was, uh, "Yeah, good job you didn't finish the cockpit, mate." Um, in so many words. Um, yeah, a little bit of light relief um, before we pop in. Stick around in chat. Um, Mr. Dorm is is coming up next. Um, don't forget tune in uh, to rest of guys all through the week. Um, I may be it's not in a minute. Um, so uh, with all that said. Uh, it's been emotional. Um, we will see you back here next week for the uh, Live Children in Need raffle. Thanks a lot, guys. Catch you. Tip with Gary Dibley.